Hello everyone and welcome to EduSearch Clinics. Today we are going to discuss a case uh, which is based on a question that was asked on our previous video regarding ruptured hepatocellular carcinoma. So this is a case that we managed uh, or we have been managing in our team since last six odd years. So let us see the case and with the case we will show the relevant literature as well as how we can manage ruptured and large hepatocellular carcinoma and achieve long-term survivals for these patients as well. So the question was how to manage these patients and do they live long? And this image very clearly asked the same question. Is there hope? And that is what we will see through this presentation. So this present presented to us in 2015 it's a 59-year-old gentleman who had an aortic valve replacement on 1980 and is on tablet warfarin. He is a known hepatitis C case, which we diagnosed on admission. The presentation was with breathlessness and hypotension. And on examination, there was tachypnea and tachycardia. Paler was present. Generalized distension of the abdomen with guarding and rebound tenderness was present. So at this presentation in emergency, he was admitted in the intensive care unit. Resuscitative protocols were initiated and he required noradrenaline due to his hypotension. We did a CT scan after stabilization and you can see in this uh, images, the axial and the coronal ones that there is a contrast blush, right? There is a contrast blush in these images. And this suggests that the patient has been bleeding. Also, you can see hemoperitoneum, fluid around the spleen, right? Fluid around the spleen and fluid around the liver, as well as a collection in the pelvis. So definitely this patient was a ruptured hepatocellular carcinoma with hemoperitoneum. Now, what can be the plan? If we want to do surgery, we will have to assess the future liver remnant, but the patient was not stable for all this. And from malignancy point of view, upper GI endoscopy is required. We have to assess the status of hepatitis C. Patient is not ready for all this when the first presentation is with rupture. Other option is conventional angiogram and embolization. Now, again, in this embolization, you can do chemoembolization or bland embolization. Data is very clear that a bland embolization to begin with is the safest in this setting. So that is what we did. We did a conventional angiogram and bland embolization. The patient stabilized after that. And then we did the workup from the cancer as well as from the patient fitness point of view. So the metastatic workup was negative. Performance status was 1. Liver function was preserved and how we assess that, we assess that using platelet count, upper GI endoscopy, liver function test and portal vein Doppler. If you want to learn about assessment of these patients, we have a separate video on it. Uh, you can check it in our YouTube channel. The other thing required for liver resections is volumetry. However, when we did the volumetry owing to the large size of the tumor, the future liver remnant volume was inadequate for a conventional right hepatectomy, right? So this is the 3D constructed image of the patient. And if we did a conventional right hepatectomy, the future liver remnant was inadequate, right? So it was an inadequate future liver remnant. So what we did was we planned a trans arterial chemoembolization now and as is known for large hepatocellular carcinomas, and this has also been our publication, which you can find from ResearchGate. If you search uh, my name or Dr. Prasad Vagle's name, you will get this article where we have clearly shown results of a sequential taste followed by portal vein embolization being better than only portal vein embolization. So that is what we plan. We do a transarterial chemoembolization first in cases with large HCC and inadequate FLR, and we evaluate them at two weeks. If at two weeks the FLR is inadequate, we then go for portal vein embolization. So with this combined TACE and PVE, 
the future liver remnant hypertrophy is better and this patient was then resected at 4 weeks so we did a right hemihepatectomy and the histopathology showed moderately differentiated hepatocellular carcinoma margins were free and the size even after taste and portal vein embolization was 9 cm post operative recovery was uneventful and the patient was put only on a follow up now a question regarding adjuvant sorafenib is routinely asked. As of now, there is no evidence of using sorafenib if the margins are clear and there is no residual disease. So for an R0 rejection, adjuvant treatment is not required. Patient was then put on a routine follow-up with three monthly clinical evaluation, six monthly scans and three monthly alpha fetoprotein liver function test and CBC. First post-rejection follow-up scan was within normal limits. You can see the cut surface of the liver here. However, one and a half years after the surgery, so we are now into say early 2017, there were a few pulmonary lesions and a scar recurrence in liver which developed within six months of the previous scan. And this nodule was adherent to the diaphragm. So now the patient has a recurrence in the abdomen, which is adherent to the diaphragm, as well as few pulmonary metastases, around five, which you can see in the PET-CT image. Now there were no other metastases. The performance status was as good and liver function was preserved with no varices on upper GI endoscopy. He had by now achieved a clearance for hepatitis C treatment. So at this page, at this stage, the question is whether to start the patient directly on sorafenib or to operate. Now, we knew that for removing this recurrence, not a large volume of liver will have to be removed. And since this patient had recovered more than around one and a half years after the first presentation of a ruptured HCC, Considering the good biology behavior of the tumor, we went ahead with a surgery, did a metastatectomy with a mesh reconstruction of the diaphragm, and then started the patient on sorafenib, 400 milligrams twice a day. So this was a bit of a challenge because not much of data on scar recurrences, as well as operating a recurrence in HCC. However, after a month of surgery, there was a mild liver dysfunction which resolved at two months and then we started the patient on sorafenib. He had mucositis and diarrhea on full dose of sorafenib. So we started sorafenib 400 and 200 so that the side effects can be managed. A PET was done one year from there and again what it showed was regression in size of the pulmonary nodules and no lesion in the abdomen. So if you see the comparison of scan at the same level for pulmonary metastasis, a few of them resolved. There was morphologic and metabolic response on PET, which was compared between 2016 and 2018, right? So there is hope after all that these patients can also be managed. And if I want to summarize my case, this patient presented to us with a ruptured large hepatocellular carcinoma and his last follow-up was a few days back and he is still ongoing very strongly and he is now on tablet sorafenib only 200 milligram twice a day. We don't know when to stop it now. There is no data on stopping sorafenib. However, currently there is no new lesion since last four years and no abdominal recurrence. He is going on with a good performance status even today and therefore sorafenib has been continued. So to conclude, a rupture and a large HCC is not a criteria for unresectability and poor prognosis. If you have inadequate future liver remnant due to the size of HCC, a taste followed by portal vein embolization combined approach gives the best response for Neutral liver remnant hypertrophy. Adjuvant sorafenib as of now has no role. However, we do use sorafenib even at reduced dose based on the GDN data. And even at 200 milligram twice a day or once a day, 
these patients do well at long term follow up thank you